Hello, today is December 17th, today is Saturnalia, and today is the day that I'm going to be building my Saturn altar. I'm going to be using my nightstand as the basis of my altar. It's going to be downstairs though. I just woke up. Okay, pardon, pardon the look. This was my grandfather's nightstand, which feels appropriate for using it. He was also um, very good with math. I think he might have been an accountant, which also feels very appropriate. So um, I'm going to take a shower and use a, a Saturn scrub before I start doing this and think all the good thoughts and I'll be back. Okay, I am clean and scrubbed. Callie helped me clean up her toys. I'm going to be putting the nightstand right there. I, I do have a candle, so I might have to remove my little fun shelf. Okay, so the nightstand is in position. There's nothing inside it yet. So in, in case you are wondering why Saturn or what I'm even doing, I am embarking on a shopping addiction recovery year. So Saturn being the planet of discipline and restriction and karma, I decided to invite some planetary help to the household for this. So yeah, let's let's move position and get my books and stuff. Okay, so these are things that will be going in here. I did some research on Saturn associations. I think we have cumin, so I, I could possibly do that. And foods that are sour, bitter, and sharp. On that note, I will be making daily coffee offerings to Saturn as well as to the Morrigan, which I, I've been doing every day for like, the past year or so. Any dark purple or black colored flower. I believe the color is supposed to be dark because if you look at Saturn up in the sky, it's like a dark brown, I think. Whereas Jupiter is like super bright. That will come into play a little bit later, hold on. Lapis lazuli, I think I have like a little pyramid thing. I, I tried not to go too over the top with um, purchasing things since the whole point uh, of like Saturn and, and Capricorn as well, since I'm a Cap, is being resourceful using what you have. So going with that whole idea, with the exception of the, the books, because that's for my recovery, I bought a few things which I will be going over. I'm going to be trying to outfit the altar with things that I already have, such as this, as I mentioned, is from my grandfather who was an accountant. And I just kind of put that together this morning when I, I mentioned that. Um, it just, it feels right. I've had a lot of ancestor work come up within the past couple of months. So I will also be adding like an ancestor altar to the Saturn altar. So this is going to be like my recovery altar or something. <sighs> Like if, if you're if you're not woo, I'm sorry, but um, I am and this is this is how I'm gonna do it But you you do what's gonna work for you if you're here for like ideas <laughs> Any black stone like obsidian or tourmaline hard and unpolished stone So what I actually have here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that but this is a piece of mahogany obsidian that's carved in the shape of Saturn. I'm gonna have this in my pocket. This is gonna be like my touchstone, literally, <laughs> when I'm you know, feeling the urge to shop or look or buy, I'm going to touch this as, as a reminder to myself what I'm doing. Like I've, I've heard of a lot of people in 12 step programs using like their, their sobriety chips as like that kind of thing, a reminder. So it doesn't have to be something, some woo-ass crystal, you know, with things, but <laughs> that's what I'm into, so that's what I'm doing. That's that. I got this off Etsy. I'll link the shop below. I took a shower with my Saturn salt scrub, also from an Etsy shop. It's very herbal. It smells nice. Um, had, a, had a good cry as I listened to a, a Saturn meditation in the shower, thank you, and imagined all of my bad karma washing off me or whatever. That was nice. 
when this runs out, I will be possibly buying another one to replace it if I need to. I, I don't think I'm going to be using this like every day or even every week, but maybe I will. I don't really know yet. This is my first time doing this. I typically do not buy crystals just because you don't know what the ethics of the company is, if they're harvesting these crystals in a, an ethical and sustainable way, or if they're <laughs> doing God knows what. So when I was a child, we lived in North Carolina for about four years, and my mom and dad took us sluicing for gems, so I have quite a few things that I can use. These are some of the nicer bits in this like glass thing. Like I, there's this green, I have no idea what a lot of these are. Um, I do know what some of them are. Like here's a piece of hematite, which I think is a Saturn gem. So I'm gonna add that. Pyrite, I believe is another, another one. Also known as fool's gold, but a lot of people do use this on like abundance altars. So that, and that will, that will come into play later. But so we're gonna, we're gonna put that aside. This looks like it could be obsidian. Actually, we're going to put it aside here. So the, the, the trick now is going to be, you know, getting my five-year-old daughter to keep her hands off my altar. So that's going to be fun. Obviously, this is a quartz crystal. Pull that out of the ground. Isn't that nice? Just, it's a fragment. You know, I, I know a lot of crystal people, for lack of a better term, will say that, you know, you should get, like, one that's as clear as possible without any flaws. But again, going back to the ethics, and this was naturally found. I found this like this. Yeah, it has flaws, but don't we all? I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that. This is actually, this is a list from Chani, Chani Nicholas's website, so I think Chani.com. It's specifically an altar for Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. So if you're putting deities on it, deities or figures associated with discipline, mastery, or working through obstacles. Personally, I, I am a follower of the Morrigan, so I will probably be putting Morrigan representatives here, possibly Bive as well, um, who is one of the Morrigan sisters, as I, I feel like she's been popping up a lot more this past year. Altar cloth should be black or dark. So Saturn is the Roman god who got conflated with the Greek god Cronus, who is also conflated with Kronos, who is the god of time, because they sound the same. They basically got merged into one, which happens a lot with pantheons and, and deities. So Cronus, who is a titan, who is Zeus's father, overthrew his father, who was eating all of the children. And Cronus was like, no, 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 you can't do that. And then he ended up actually doing the same thing. And that's when Zeus overthrew him. Anyway, history lesson is over. So that that's also why you'll also hear Saturn called the devourer. There's actually a Goya painting, which is quite if you look at the word Saturnine, it's defined as being slow and gloomy as far as like mood. If you think about it that way, there's a long running belief in Saturn being very restrictive and gloomy. <laughs> a lot of feelings of, of depression and stuff. If you go back to the, the devourer depression, you know, can eat you alive. So that's fun. Going back to Saturn. The tarot card is the hermit. If you're doing your, your altar space, things handed down from ancestors. Here we go. Old things, antiques. This is, I feel like this is more toward Kronos than Kronos. But anyway, everything's mingling together. Make the altar on a Saturday. Try with things that you have available to represent restraint, which is what I'm doing trying to. Metals, iron, and part of gold. Stones, diamond, onyx, cameo, iron ore, and hematite. Other materials and substances, pyrite, lead, and black iron. So the thing with mahogany obsidian, which is what the little Saturn crystal is made of, the brown part is from an overabundance of iron. So we have iron here and obsidian, and we've got some pyrite here. Hooray. No lead. Offerings you can include are pure water, rock salt, black rice, black mustard seeds. I'm going to be offering coffee, Saturn, given the day, Saturday. It's also associated with Shabbat and the Jews. Uh, observing a set of Shabbat-like restrictions regularly is also a way to show one's devotion to the planet and its spirits. I kind of want to make a universe's best dad mug for Saturn for his coffee. We shall see.
Saturn is where we restrict ourselves, discipline, structure, and reality. Karma, the planet of destiny. This is how we handle responsibility and maturity. Here we go. I, I have all these books. Hi, Penny. Yes, you can sit down. She's terrified of the washing machine, and I have laundry going, so. Okay. Well, all right. She's, she's, she's going to be with us for a while. This is Penny. I also picked up two um, altar candles from the Chani shop, one for Saturn and one for Jupiter. Saturn is the planet of restriction, whereas Jupiter is the planet of expansion, so they're often at odds with each other. And also, if you think about it, Jupiter is the Roman version of Zeus, and you know, two dads here. <laughs> Speaking of my two dads, I love to think about Saturn and Jupiter as you know, the, the characters from My Two Dads where Saturn is Paul Reiser and it's the very like kind of straight-laced dad and Jupiter is, I forgot his name, I think it's Greg. Jupiter is like the hot fun dad, like maybe a little bit overindulgent at some sometimes and, and Saturn's like, y'all, you gotta stop. So that's what, you know, these two are, are representative of. So this one says this small batch beeswax candle was hand poured at an auspicious time for Saturn and I don't remember when they said they poured it. They have it on the website but um, it's it seemed very on point for what I'm doing this this upcoming year with you know my recovery. May its light help you commit to your most authentic self. Thank you. And then this one, may its light spark wisdom, faith, and abundance. And I do remember this one. Jupiter is going to be entering Aries in, in my fourth house, which is the house of ancestors and your house and home and the hearth with all that stuff, uh, family. So I think part of my like ancestral healing journey, I can't believe I'm talking about this on YouTube, but like no one's here right now, so I'm just talking to myself. But okay, part of my ancestral healing that I, I feel like I've been called to do is to heal some of the, the money stuff because um, I you know I was thinking about why I can't hold on to money and immediately the answer popped into my head because it wasn't safe to hold on to money and like I, I do have ancestors that they were Jewish um, I do have ancestors that died in the Holocaust I do also have an ancestor, you know, that was closer in line that was a soldier for the German army during World War II. Not by choice, but at, he was 19. He just had a baby with his young wife and, you know, it was either join or die. And he ended up, you know, dying in Russia, I believe. But that's beside the point. So that, that just goes to show you that your own ancestry and your own ancestral traumas and lineage and all that, it's never clean. It's never clean and clear. There's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of stuff. So anyway, <laughs> now we're going to try to figure out what I'm doing. So I'm going to go get a cloth for the altar. This is the altar cloth that I had used for my Morrigan altar before I got like an actual proper one. It is something I bought from Avon from like when I was selling it in my 20s. It's you know, got gold on one side and it's a purple velvet on the other. So not completely exact, you know, but it's what I have. So there we go. I want to make sure that I have access to a drawer because that's, that's where I'm going to be, you know, storing my journal and stuff. So I need like a plate or something. Uh, the Saturn candle has the same kind of herby smell, herbaceous the smell there's looks like there's some obsidian or something in it and some herbs it says saturn i worship at the altars of all that keeps me honest honest with recovery that is going to be extremely important so yeah i'm just gonna store my candles in here in the back have all my crystal things out this is my recovery journal which i'm going to be setting up tonight the day is not going to be out for another day or two. Keep all of my recovery books in here so that I can read them as I'm sitting in this chair right here and, you know, have the candle on. I could put this Saturn scrub in here, but I think I'm just gonna, maybe I will. I'll put it in the drawer. 
Let's find a plate. Okay, so I just pulled these two Fiesta Ware cup and saucer down from storage because we don't typically use these cups unless it's for ice cream because when I want coffee, I want coffee, you know. This is going to be Saturn's offering dish and cup for coffee. I'm going to arrange this stuff here. I'm not arranging it in any special way, just however feels good for me. Like I'm not aligning it to directions or anything like that. You you might find that's what you want to do. My craft is more like intuitive. One might say I am a chaos witch. I don't know, but I'm just doing what feels good and right to me. Of course, it's not complete yet because I don't have pictures. Like I want to get a picture of my grandfather and my great grandmother because those are two of my ancestors that have been popping up a lot within this framework here. So I'm gonna just put the crystals and stones. Again, I'm worried that my, my daughter is gonna mess with them, but this I'm gonna be keeping in my pocket. I don't have pockets today because I'm wearing leggings, but um, I don't want to forget about that. So here's to hoping she will keep her hands off. This will go in here, or maybe I'll just put it like that. As long as she doesn't I do want to pick like a card deck to use for communication purposes. Again, welcome to the Woo channel. I'll be right back as I examine those. Alright, so this is what I've chosen. This is just a deck bag from Threads of Fate. It says Split the Sky on it. So I was looking for something that like Saturn. And I've, I've been through my Saturn return already, if you have as well. Mm -hmm. What did you get out of it? <laughs> I got my husband out of it, so that's nice. That's a story. But uh, I was looking for something that would be hard hitting. Whenever I do, you know, cards for healing, I, I want something that's going to call me out of my bullshit. So, of course, I picked the Empyrean deck. And I typically have been pairing this with the Little Darkness Lilifer deck, which is adorable. And this is probably gonna, you know, turn a lot of people off, but you know, it's, it's Lucifer and, and Lilith in here. And the idea behind this deck is it's a healing deck for the rejected masculine and rejected feminine. So I thought that these two make really good companions. And if you are, you know, here to address addiction and all of that shame, who better to do it than the, the two deities that are reviled and kept in the dark, right? So that's my, my thoughts behind that. So this will go in here. I might forget it's in here, so I'm a little bit worried. But um, So before, before I end this, as I mentioned in my first Vlog Humbug video, I don't craft much with my witchcraft, but I do know there is a difference between invoking and evoking a god. The shortcut to remembering is that invoking has the word in in it. So if that's inviting the deity inside of you, in you, may have uh, unpredictable consequences, whereas evoking, you are inviting them to stand beside you to your circle, whatever. So that is that is my my witch tip for today, I guess. Careful, words matter, right? We we know this. So I'm going to just light this candle and that's really about it. So here it is. Pretty pretty simple at this point. You know, I don't have a whole lot going on. But yeah, that's that's about it. There there she is. Just uh I guess we're all done. I can link some of the resources that, you know, used to compile my list of, of stuff down below if you are interested. But, you know, and this is probably gonna grow and change with the year as I, you know, do more and learn more and, and stuff. And again, like I said, I, I have some pictures of my grandfather and my grandmother and my great-grandmother that I want to put on for like an ancestor thing. So I may as well do my, my grandmother and my great-aunt their sisters but anyway uh yeah so if you made it this far um hopefully it wasn't too boring and yeah thanks for watching and i hope that you have enjoyed your saturnalia okay bye